Hello everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, let me quickly review you one carbon metabolism. So one carbon metabolism basically indicates there will be a donation of a carbon atom in variety of metabolic reactions. Some of our metabolic reactions which will which need to car carry out some of the important functions in our body. So they need a carbon atom and that has to be donated by someone. So who is going to do that? So this will be done by a tetrahydrofolate derivative. Basically tetrahydrofolate, it carries a one carbon derivative and that will be donated in some of the metabolic reactions. So the tetrahydrofolate is also referred as vitamin B9. So there are tetrahydrofolate derivatives which are participating in one carbon metabolism and they are N10 formyl tetrahydrofolate so that is CHO we have N5 N10 methanyl tetrahydrofolate and that is CH double bond and we have N5 N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate that is CH2 and we have N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate that is CH3 now to tetrahydrofolate in order to make all these different types of uh, folate derivatives so it needs again vitamin B6 and vitamin B2 and vitamin B12. So these are the other vitamins that are necessary for tetrahydrofolate to get into their derivatives that is N10 formyl tetrahydrofolate, N5 N10 methanyl tetrahydrofolate, N5 N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate and N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate. B6, B, B2 and B12. These are the other water soluble vitamins that are needed for tetrahydrofolate to get all these derivatives. So now let's move the one carbon metabolism will go on in our body. What are those reactions that are participating in one carbon metabolism? So we get folate from green leafy vegetables. Usually folate we get as polyglutamate form of folate in the intestine the glutamates are removed and monoglutamate or just folate is absorbed and once it is in our body it will be converted to dihydrofolate by an enzyme dihydrofolate reductase now the dihydrofolate is converted to tetrahydrofolate by the same enzyme dihydrofolate reductase applied aspect for this is methotrexate methotrexate is an anti-cancer drug is going to inhibit dihydrofolate reductase enzyme thereby conversion of folate into tetrahydrofolate is decreased that's how methotrexate is going to work as an anti-cancer drug anyway so this is not something that we are going to discuss now since i have, uh, I have come across DHF, dhfr so i just wanted to mention you about methotrexate now what happens to the THF tetrahydrofolate now the tetrahydrofolate will interact with serine by serine hydroxymethyl transferase the serine hydroxymethyl transferase it needs pyridoxal phosphate as a coenzyme and that's a derivative of B6 this is what I was saying in the previous slide that vitamin B6 is needed to make tetrahydrofolate derivative so what derivative you are going to get here so serine hydroxymethyl transferase is going to take a methyl group from serine that is a side chain methyl group it is attached to a hydroxyl group there that is in the side chain so CH2 is taken from serine and it will be attached to tetrahydrofolate and the compound that you get is N5 N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate and you get glycine there this is a reversible reaction once you get N5 N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate so N5 N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate is it has got three fates here. So one of the fate of N5 N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate is it will be used as a coenzyme by thymidylate synthase enzyme. Now this thymidylate synthase what it does it's going to convert deoxyuridine monophosphate into thymidylate monophosphate. So deoxyuridyl monophosphate it's a pyrimidine thymidylate monophosphate is also pyrimidine only thing is thymidylate monophosphate later it will be converted into thymidylate diphosphate and thymidylate triphosphate that goes into DNA synthesis so to make thymidylate monophosphate you need N5 N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate as a carbon donor and note that during this reaction 
N5, N10, methylene tetrahydrofolate is released as dihydrofolate. This is something special here because tetrahydrofolate is released as dihydrofolate and you need dihydrofolate reductase to regenerate it back into tetrahydrofolate. So the methotrexate is going to inhibit this reaction. And thymidylate synthase enzyme can be inhibited by an anti-cancer drug called 5-fluorouracil. That's another applied aspect that you should remember here. Thymidylate synthase inhibited by 5-fluorouracil. Okay, so one of the tetrahydrofolate derivative here, N5, N10, methylene tetrahydrofolate, helping in the formation of thymidylate monophosphate. That is one carbon metabolism, one of the example there. Now, what is the other fate of N5, N10, methylene tetrahydrofolate? So this will undergo a reduction process into N5, methyl tetrahydrofolate. This will be done by methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase enzyme, MTHFR, methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. So this particular enzyme needs FAD, flavin adenine dinucleotide, that's the derivative of riboflavin. That's why one carbon metabolism to make tetrahydrofolate derivatives, you need riboflavin vitamin B2 also. Now once you get N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate from MTHFR, note that this is an irreversible reaction. So you cannot reverse this reaction. So once you convert N5-N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate into N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, you cannot reverse it back there. Okay. Now, N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, it will participate in the conversion of homocysteine into methionine. This job is done by methionine synthase enzyme. So, N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate is released as tetrahydrofolate during this reaction. The methyl group from tetrahydrofolate, it will be used to convert cobalamin into methylcobalamin, that is CH3B12. So, the carbon Methyl group here, it will be coming from N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. So vitamin B12 is important here to convert N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate. During this time, methyl group is given to homocysteine. That's when homocysteine is converted to methionine. This will be done by methionine synthase enzyme. Now, methane, this is another example for one carbon metabolism, conversion of homocysteine into methionine via methylcobalamin and that needs N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate which is converted to tetrahydrofolate. Once you get methionine, methionine will be converted to S-adenosyl methionine and S-adenosyl methionine will undergo methylation reaction. There are variety of reactions which needs S-adenosyl methionine as a methyl group donor. It can be DNA synthesis, RNA synthesis, it can be norepinephrine that is neurotransmitter synthesis, norepinephrine into epinephrine formation. It can be formation of creatinine or it can be a protein synthesis. It can be methylation reaction like histidine, uh, methylation of uh, histones. So that is a methylation process, DNA methylation. All these processes needs a sedinocell methionine it means you need methionine to make acetinocyl methionine in methylation reaction. For all that, you need N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate and vitamin B12. That's how you make tetrahydrofolate. If there is a deficiency of vitamin B12, it means N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. It won't be converted into tetrahydrofolate. It means your tetrahydrofolate will be struck as N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. Note that this N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate cannot go back into N5-N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate because MTHFR is an irreversible reaction. It means once there is a vitamin B12 deficiency, your N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate is nowhere to go. And this is what is called as methyl trap or it is also called as folate trap. Folate trap, it means tetrahydrofolate is trapped as N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. It is sometimes referred as methyl trap because N5-methyl, it is trapped here as N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate and that happens in vitamin B12 deficiency. Now, let's see what is the other fate of N5-N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate. Now, the N5-N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate will undergo oxidation process to make N5-N10-methanyl tetrahydrofolate. Note the difference here. N5-N10-methylene tetrahydrofolate, 
will be converted to it is oxidized to N5N10-methanyl tetrahydrofolate. Now N5N10-methanyl tetrahydrofolate is oxidized further into N10-formyl tetrahydrofolate. Both the oxidation process will be mediated by methylene tetrahydrofolate dehydrogenase enzyme that is MTHFD methylene tetrahydrofolate dehydrogenase. Once you get N5, sorry, N10 formyl tetrahydrofolate, so it will get into purine biosynthesis, especially carbon 2 and carbon 8 of purine rings. They are derived from N10 formyl tetrahydrofolate. Note again, carbon 2 and carbon 8 in purine ring, they will be derived from N10 formyl tetrahydrofolate. So this is another reaction where one carbon metabolism is going on. Okay, so these are all the reactions where one carbon metabolism is going on in our body and that is the examples that I have gave, gave is formation of thymidylate monophosphate that is a pyrimidine synthesis, formation of purines that is C2C8 via N10 formyl tetrahydrofolate, formation of methionine that is via vitamin B12 and N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate that is a one carbon derivative and also synthesis of glycine through S, uh, serine hydroxy methyl transferase during this time tetrahydrofolate gets in and there will be formation of N5, N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. Now what you are going to see if there is a folate deficiency. Consider that there, is, there will be a folate deficiency. During folate deficiency, so if there is a deficiency of tetrahydrofolate, so what will happen? So do, during this time so this one carbon derivative folate tetrahydrofolate derivatives which are participating in one carbon metabolism so simply their availability will be decreased it means there will be decrease in the synthesis of thymidylate monophosphate so it means thymidylate triphosphate synthesis also decreases so this will lead to incorporation of UTP uridine uh, deoxyuridine triphosphate into DNA so that is a, a replacement of TTP with uh, UTP so DUTP basically and also this can lead to DNA breakage it lead to defect in the DNA repair mechanism and this will lead to Im uh, improper proliferation of the cell giving rise to cancer so that's one of the basis for folate deficiency leading to colon cancer and that kind of things and also on the other side See the if there is a deficiency of folate, so it means N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate is also deficient. That means there will be elevation of homocysteine and decrease in methionine. If the methionine is decreased, so there will be decrease in S adenosyl methionine. It means methylation process will also be decreased. Okay. So these are some of the things which are related to one carbon metabolism. I hope this uh, quick and short video helped you. So I just wanted to uh, give you a, a brief and rapid review for one carbon metabolism. Thanks for watching as always. So see you again in my next video. Take care.